Hello, it's Tim Estrell, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Today I have a 2018 Lexus RX 350L. Yeah, I like doing the L. <laughs> um, I'm gonna walk you around the vehicle, show you what it's like. We're gonna hop inside, do a little talk with the interior. Well, it's new, which is the additional third row seat. Go for a drive and I'll tell you all about it coming up next. the exterior of the 2018 Lexus RX 350L. We have Lexus's spindle grill. That's their new design language. We have the check mark, uh, kind of Nike one of looking things, uh, daytime running lights, some fog lamps put in there. Of course we got chrome. We got chrome all over the place. Lots of chrome. Uh, along the sides we have the mirror, little chrome accents. We have some nice body styling here. Some nice body language. Nice body lines connecting the sides together. We have a little uh, kind of cool column the the rear window here this is the c column window um finish off the rear kind of these we call them alien eyes they're kind of a bug like coming out of this uh tail lamp here here on the back side and we have the Do I have dual i don't have dual exhaust i have a single exhaust and uh clearly the driver's side same thing I'll uh, give you a few tips here. These are Vortex generators. Ooh, there's some, there's two here. And there should be, we'll see if there's one on the mirror. No, nope, don't have one in the mirror. Typically I have one in the mirror or in the front. What happens is, is the wind on the side comes along the side of the vehicle and this creates disturbance. The Vortex generators do, and it creates disturbance which keeps the air um, moving along the vehicle. It gives you a smoother ride. So in the back, we do have the third row, uh, like we talked about in the intro. This is the this is new for this year, uh, 2018 model. Uh, I do have my oh, I have stuff I haven't gotten out. <laughs> uh, this is a cover. It's going to cover up the third row, so it's going to go right in there. If you put down the seats, you can put it right in there. It's a shade, so you can pull it across, and it'll cover up this back area so when you put stuff back here you can kind of hide it um, I should have and here that I have I have the fold down seat option so I may have to push that push this uh, alien things down and there was a thing that I saw Everman driver talk about this alarm goes off if it's not in the right spot you can hear that alarm but we'll go ahead and finish putting that down Okay, and then we have the last of the cars driving by. Kind of a popular place today. Uh, usually not this popular. So we do have some uh, HV vacs and controls for heating and cooling. Um, I do have a cup holder in this third row. It's gonna be right up there. And that's kind of the other side too. So there is fully loaded down. Uh, this is 4.3 inches longer. So a little bit more room than the standard RX. Uh, but those third row seats, I mean. Yeah, and those third row seats, I know I could probably hop back there, but I don't know if I'm going to get out. So I think we're just going to leave that alone. That's for kids only. Kids only, not adults. Let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop in the second row, and let's talk about what's going on back there. All right, the second row. There we go. This row fits me better. Um, Lexus always does a pretty nice job with the wood trim. It does have the gloss cover to it, but I just like the way it adds. I like the way they do their styling here with the chrome and the um, tan leather and the wood. This is very consistent throughout the lineup. Uh, very consistent speaker placement. You know, this is what you're going to find in the same RX 350 nowadays. It's basically the same thing here. It's the same vehicle, just a little bit longer. Um, in the second row, we do have the heated seats, the cup holders that do close, and I think they come out. Nope, they just close. And this goes up and creates, folds flat. And so in this version, I have three, four, five, six, seven in the back. So I got seven seats. 
they do make a six seater, which is the second row captain's chairs, which actually works out better if you want to use a third row quite a bit because those captain chairs you can just move them around like actually walk around and my kids like in captain chair setup can just walk around and get into the back pretty easily uh let me go ahead and hop in the front seat because it's getting crazy hot in here and i'm gonna hit that ac stat all right in the front this is the first thing i'm doing hitting that button and you can see the steering wheel changes it drops and comes to you seat goes forward that's a very typical lexus thing turn off my country music um, very typical Lexus is the seat moving forward and the steering wheel coming back out um, here on the inside I got my big cup of water I got my drive modes eco normal and sport sports always better I got a this look disconnecting rear axle this is for all-wheel drive if you don't want the all-wheel drive you can press that button and only have just the uh, front wheels it's a front-wheel driven car with an all-wheel drive option this is traction control this is also known as the fun button you do sport and you do this button and you get crazy. Um, I got uh, a really nice big dash. What's cool about what Lexus has done here, they've done the big screen here, and we've done a, a two kind of tier dash. And so you can, a lot more visibility these days, and it just fits really well. Um, more automakers are starting to do this with that huge screen. And that's, you can find that carried around. Uh, we do have the Lexus clock. That's a mark of luxury. All luxury vehicles typically have a clock. We have a CD player there. We have our controls, which are all within easy reach of the driver, which is nice. Um, nice shifter. One thing I like about the shifter that other companies don't do all the time is you can see you have sport mode. These aren't sport mode. This is a gear selector. So it's got an eight-speed transmission. So if I drop it down and drive and then kick the, the shifter to the left, I can manually select what gear I want to be in. Some manufacturers allow you to go all the way back, and if sometimes you do that, and you're actually in the manual mode, but you don't know it. You think you're in drive. It's a whole thing. But if I like how this is all, this is my favorite setup. You, it just, can, you can see it just, doo -doo -doo -doo, and so you know what gear you're in. I have electronic parking brake, and I have, it's an automatic, um, sorry, let's hold. Oh, sorry, that's, I thought that, that's not an auto button. There's a hold button that you can hold with the brake if you want to hold the brakes. Uh, and then I got, on this side, got my, heating cooled seats, which is kind of a weird placement. I kind of have to go around to get to it. I don't really like that. Um, I don't have a trackpad. Lexus has been doing a trackpad, which is, is a square that you can kind of just put your finger on. I have a track mouse, which moves through my screens. Uh, it does take a little bit of use to, but it you can move through your screens pretty easily. Uh, and I have a pretty good storage bin here with a USB and 12 volt around here to the steering wheel let me straighten that out a little bit uh, we well, get it straight um, we have our TFT display this shows us this is a computer display shows you mile per gallon you're getting it shows you what gear you're in shows you the attack you have the tack and the speedometer next to it with my temperature gauge and my fuel gauge um, and you can cycle through these screens kind of gives you information so you can see I'm averaging 17.7 miles per gallon um, going back different and this is flip through different menus. This is uh, adaptive, adaptive cruise control here. This is the where you set the distance between the vehicle in front of you once you hit cruise, and it'll keep that distance in front of the vehicle until you go around to pass them. Lane departure, um, which is always annoying, so we always turn that off. And the uh, cruise control, the the random spot for it, I've never really been a fan of this spot. We have our audio controls here. We have Bluetooth connectivity. All right, and coming over here, we have the tailgate open, we have auto high beams, and then we have a camera view. Um, I do have some controls for the windows, locks, and mirror. I have seat set positions, so if my wife and I drive this, different positions. I do have the windshield wiper stock here um, for the, excuse me, this is the light stock, these are all the lights, and this is the windshield wiper stock. So that's basically the interior. I do have a sunroof. That's always kind of cool. I like sunroofs. Uh, some people don't like them at all. I don't kind of one of those things. And I do have my handy dandy sunglass holder. Um, yeah, that's, that's what it is. Uh, what's interesting is there's no conversation mirror there. So a lot of times in, in minivans, you get this quite a bit. And it, it folds down, there's a convex mirror there, which is really handy if you're having kids behind you. And with the third row set up here in Alexis, I would anticipate they want more kids or back there. So why won't you have a convex mirror? Hmm. hmm.
on the road again. Just can't wait to get on that road again. Oh, hey. Uh, we're doing a little drive here. I'm doing a little turn. You know, even being a little bit longer, it still turns pretty well. The same as the RX350. Well, RX350 S-Sport, which I love, and the regular RX350. So, I got plenty of power in this. You know, 290 horsepower, even loaded down with people, you can have plenty to get up and go. Uh, and then you put it in sport mode, and you have a lot more fun. Not quite F-Sport fun, but you have more fun. Uh, eco mode, if you're really concerned with fuel economy, which I am not. Oh, I should take a little glance. Uh, fuel economy was actually 18, 21, 25. 21 being combined. 18 city, 25 highway. And you can tell my 17.7 mile per gallon. I drive spiritedly when I drive this press car. Um, I, I've been a big fan of Lexus. I really think they're comfortable. I really don't think a lot of people pay a lot of attention to Lexus as far as the luxury brand. But I just like their interiors. They're not the most stylish, in my opinion. But the damn thing's pretty reliable. It always scores well in reliability, holds resale value, and things hold up. And so even though it doesn't have as fancy materials as maybe the competition does, you get your value out of it. Now, I've been looting this fact a little bit. I've been talking about one thing I want to tell you about, and I haven't quite gotten there yet. So let's talk about it. The third row. It's kind of a joke. Sorry, it really kind of is. Um, I don't know what they were thinking there as far as additional four inches makes a big difference i guess for the length of the vehicle but it still doesn't really add additional seating what i think is really fascinating with this is that toyota in their lineup they offer a highlander the highlander has a usable third row it's got you know the, it's a two row suv with third row i should say three row suv let me talk correctly and um i did some stats which i'm gonna do what i told i said i wasn't gonna do um it is the same wheelbase the Highlander and the RX had the same identical, the RX L had the same identical wheelbase, which I thought was pretty interesting. But one vehicle has three rows that you can use the third row, one doesn't. The difference is, is that the Lexus RX350 is longer. Wait, no, I said that correctly. The RX360 is 196.9 inches long. That's the total length of the vehicle. The Highlander is 192.5 inches. Yeah, it's literally four inches longer is the RX350 L. Well, why can't you use the rear seats? It's all the styling. It's the way the interior is laid out. It's the way the rake of the windshield is. The windshield, this windshield's a lot more raked than the Highlander is. And from my estimated viewpoint, it certainly seems that way. And it's just the way the vehicle's laid out. You can't use that third row. And so I guess I get it. Why redesign the vehicle? to include third row and just add more length to it. Okay, fine. Uh, but I think the whole RX platform, especially this, uh, needs to be broken in half. Keep the RX 350, keep the S-Sport. Don't mess with that. That thing is your bread and butter. It's perfect. But this 350L, no, 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 no. I don't think you're gonna get away with that. I don't think you're gonna have customers saying, oh yeah, he's got third row, it's usable, let's go for it. No, I don't understand why Lexus doesn't just go ahead and build another vehicle. I know a lot of R&D costs. I understand it's a lot of production, you know, costs involved in that. But here's the thing that always blows my mind. The, some of the best-selling vehicles in the United States right now, GMC Yukon, Chevy Tahoe, Cadillac Escalade. Like the Lincoln, Lincoln Navigator is doing pretty well, too. All large, three-row SUVs, full-size. What Lexus has? Lexus has the LX570, which sells better in Saudi Arabia than it does in the United States. They have the GX460, I think it's 70 these days, whatever they call the thing, which is a boxy off-road SUV, and they have nothing else. They have the, the two-row and now the three-row RX350L, but they don't have a really true full-size three-row SUV you can load up your family and take the lake or take camping and be a luxurious ride. I know the LX570 has three rows. Before you comment below. But again, it's the same deal. <laughs> same deal. Plus, it's $90,000. It's shorter than the Cadillac Escalade. And does not have to have the cargo room. Not buying it. Sorry, not buying it. So that's, you know, to me, I think Lexus needs to go ahead and bite the bullet. Get off their focus on the cars. Work on an SUV. Bring in the profit. Really drive the marketplace. And create a whole new lineup of full-size SUVs. I'm not buying the fuel economy argument anymore. You know, the Yukon sold like crazy. Tahoe's selling like crazy. People in the country, in the sticks, like where I'm at, we buy these, we drive them all over the place. I see navigators quite often out here. So I think it's time.
So there you go. There are my thoughts on the 2018 Lexus RX 350L. L could stand for something else. So for more Pickup Truck Plus SUV news, talk, reviews, uh, live streams where we drink whiskey and have a good time, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe! Also check out PickupTruckTalk.com. Find us on social media, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. It's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. However that works. How the hell that works? I'm not really sure anymore. Um, make sure you uh, leave hate mail to Tim at PickupTruckTalk.com or leave hate mail below comments. Email me. I love reading them. Just let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road. So there's my thoughts on the 2018 RX 350L, which L could stand for something else. Sorry, just not a big fan. I love the RX 350. Don't mess with that, like I've said. Uh, thank you, Overman Driver, for letting me do this review on your channel. Um, I'm uh, growing my channel as I speak, so make sure you check that out. PickupTruckTalk.com.